Alrighty, so today we are going to be taking a look at a distribution for the Raspberry Pi 4 called Phoenix Pi. So this is a distribution built by a guy named Phoenix. And he used, he's used Raspberry Pi OS as the base and man has he packed this distribution with so many awesome features. So in this video we're going to be going over all those features and seeing what awesome things this operating system holds for us. So there, this video is going to be a bit long and I'm going to take a look at all the eventual individual themes that are included so i'll put the timestamps down below so you can easily click them and access the different themes but to get started right now we are running phoenix pi with the phoenix theme so if we go over to our web browser right here we have phoenix pi and this is beta version 0.9.1 so you can actually just download it from the website right now and it is beta but man this thing is already awesome i have so many awesome things to say about it so let's get right into the desktop and see what we have right now so this is the, the default theme when you boot up you're going to be welcome with this theme nothing else and this is our default cursor and it looks pretty cool so what he's done here he's basically made his own theme where he's added like the mac os look like the mac os finder mac os launcher and then he's also added basically the windows 10 type of feel with the exit icons right here so it's a really unique feel that most distributions do not include and the we're running the Cairo doc on the bottom right here and we have this little Simpsons guy down here which is kind of funny so there is a lot of animation and stuff going on down the bottom and when you try to launch an app it kind of rotates like a cube and it launches for you so it's pretty cool and right now you might think well wow, this distribution looks really heavy well right now if you look right here my RAM is at 450 megabytes so it really is not eating that much RAM and another amazing thing that this distribution has for us is this XFCE Compiz Start stop so i'm going to double click it give it a second it's going to load up for me give it a second the desktop has to reload like this and then man is this going to be cool so right now we are on our desktop and if i click right here we get access to four different desktops and it's super easy to change all you have to do with your cursor is double click right there and the next awesome thing that this compass does let's say we want to launch terminal give it a second look at this wobbly windows and this wobbly windows are so smooth i was expecting the wobbly windows to be not smooth at all but man these are so smooth it's so awesome it's great and one more awesome feature that it's unlocked for us is what you're gonna do you're gonna control alt and you're just gonna hold on the bottom and turn around we have a cube in our system you can see all four desktops like this with a cube you can look at them from the bottom it's just so awesome and it works so well look at this there's no lag i'm just spinning and stuff on my raspberry pi 4 and it is working so well and another awesome thing about this look i click h top right now i have all these effects running on my raspberry pi and i am only using 677 megabytes of ram think about this ubuntu running gnome uses almost 1.2 gigabytes of ram and there's no awesome features like this this desktop has all these cool features and it's running super lightweight. So that is a huge plus and I'm really happy about that. So we are running the XFCE desktop right here and our terminal uses the ZSH shell. So it doesn't use the normal bin SH, it uses the ZSH. So it's pretty cool. And when we type NeoFetch in our terminal, we actually get welcome with this. It says Phoenix Pi based on Raspbian. So I am up to date with all my system upgrades because I already did that. But it's pretty cool. We have the Conky right here with our time and then we have our download speed and then we have our cpu and ram usage so it's really useful to have those on our desktop right there and then right what we have down here is basically we have application launcher which is like lightpad so we double click it give it a second this one does take a bit to launch give it a second it has to load up because it is kind of heavy i'm going to click it one more time see we have those fireworks and right here we have all our applications you can actually search for them right here it makes it a lot easier to find all your applications we're going to go through that in one second we have finder we have applications menu which is like an app right here that we can actually just search all our apps so it's also an alternative to lightpad right here like let's say we want anything like extra we just search it and it shows up right there we have calculator we have chromium we have xfce terminal bluetooth and these are just the other normal things so we have a really nice stock on the bottom with these pretty cool animations it's really cool so next in this part of the video i'm going to be going over the applications that come pre-installed with phoenix pi so we click right here 
we're going to go through. So we have terminal emulator, we have file manager, mail reader, web browser, and our settings. These are just all the normal XFC settings. So I'm not going to go through these because there really is nothing special in there. In accessories, we have application finder. There are tons of applications in here. I'm going to just going to be looking at the ones that I think are important. So we have screenshot, which is actually really cool. It works really well. We can take active window, select region. It's basically XFC screenshot, but it works incredibly well. And oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's double click on my desktop real fast. And then right here, let's go back to the application. So in Chromium apps, we have Netflix, Readme, Spotify, and Twitter. So these are basically just web apps. There's really nothing special about this. You could just open up your web browser and go straight to these if you liked. So it's not that special. So it's just Netflix, Spotify, Disney Plus, and stuff like that. Oh my goodness, I keep on doing that. So that is a bit of an annoying feature if you miss the little icon right there. In development, we have Thony. In games, we have Minecraft Pi. Graphics, we have GIMP. No paint drawing editor, image viewer, and just some other things. Internet, we have Chromium web browser, remote desktop viewer, transmission, which is a BitTorrent client. In multimedia, we have Rhythm Box, purple, just some normal video things in Office. We have calendar, dictionary, nothing special. We have Phoenix Expo in here, which is actually really cool. We actually do have GNOME software. So I think GNOME software actually includes Snap packages. So you already have Snap installed on your system. If you have any, any of those packages you want to install, just launch GNOME software and you have it right here. So it's really easy to do. And this time I'm not going to miss. Yes, I didn't miss it. And in system, here are just some other settings that I don't really need to go through. But this is basically Phoenix Pi with the Phoenix theme and the applications that are included. So it's, as you see, it's a really filled operating system and we have a ton of stuff in here. There is so much to look at already. So when you launch this operating system, there is a lot. But one of the coolest things about this operating system is that it includes lots of different themes. So let's switch over to one of those other themes. So we click right here, change the desktop environment. I'm going to click it, give it a second. It's going to load up to this login screen right here. And it actually looks like a really nice login screen. I really like that background, to be honest. We click on desktop right here, and there are tons of ones right here. So I'm actually going to go through all these to give you an idea of what this operating system actually holds. So the 10 is Windows 10, and the password is going to be Phoenix. And I do want to mention there are other desktop environments pre-installed in here, like LXDE, Openbox, Cinnamon, or Default X Session. But the themes really only function the best when using XFCE, so I recommend just sticking to XFCE rather than trying any of those other ones. So our password is going to be Phoenix. We're going to type in Phoenix right here, give it a second to log in, and then we will be on the Windows 10 theme on Phoenix OS. So right here we are, and the Windows 10 background has been changed a bit since it is copyrighted. But it looks like a pretty nice Windows 10 theme. It looks pretty real, I mean. The Windows 10 icon right here, it looks pretty much like Twister OS version. And it feels pretty much like Windows 10. And we have that transparency right here. So that's pretty nice. And we have our file manager right here. We have our close icons do look exactly like Windows 10 and it just feels really similar to Windows 10. And we do have RetroPie setup right here. So if you were to want to install RetroPie, you could easily install it using that. But if we XFC effects actually do work on every version, every theme. So you can have this on the Windows 10 theme, Windows 95 theme, Windows X XP, it all works. Let's turn around right here. And in the Windows 10 theme, we actually have these little fish right here. So it's pretty cool. And let's go from the outside right here. So, I mean, it's a really cool addition to have these RAM things right here and to be able to switch around in our desktop. And like I mentioned before, it doesn't use that much RAM. So our terminal right here has that CMD logo right there. And it just looks really slick and cool. And I really just love those wobbly windows. They are just an awesome addition. I love it. So here we are, and this is the Windows 10 theme, basically. There's not much else to say about it, because it is just Windows 10. Our search icon right here, let's take a look and see what that does. That does catfish search. Let me do that. Let's close out a catfish search real fast. And then right here we have, this actually will let us add different workspaces. And this is like a Cortana, but it's not Cortana, actually, of course, because Cortana is only for Windows. 
So we just close out of there, but this is the Windows 10 theme. So let's go back and take a look at another theme. So let's click on the this icon right here. And we're going to go log out. Log out is basically how you're going to be able to switch through the different themes. So next in line, let's look at the Windows 7 theme. So we're going to click Windows 7 and our password again is Phoenix. And I would recommend changing this every time after you flash the operating system because you'll want a new look on your a new password so you don't get hacked or anything like that. So we have this Windows 10 logo right, Windows 7 logo right there. It looks pretty cool. We have Word, Excel. These are all actually LibreOffice applications, but they look pretty legit. We have our Windows 7 logo right here, and it's basically the Windows 10 version, but just changed up a bit. So it's pretty real. It looks pretty much like Windows 10. I mean, they've got pretty close to that Twister OS look right here. So that is pretty cool. And I'm not going to show XFC Compass again, but like I said, it works on every version of the desktop. So you don't have to worry about it not functioning correctly because it works on every one. So this is basically the Windows 7 theme. There's really not much to say about it. It looks pretty cool. Let's go to the next one. Click right here. Oh, that must be the settings. Let's go click the wrong thing. Let's go right here and let's click the lock button. And this, after this, let's take a look at the Windows 95 theme. So here it is loading and we have the Windows 95. So this operating system really is packed with lots of themes and you really have a vague area of desktops that you can use on this operating system. So here we are with the Windows 95 look and man that this has that nice retro feel and the background is a nice blue color turquoise our start menu right here looks pretty pretty legit just like Windows 95 and I mean this is Windows 95 it looks pretty legit there's really not much to say about it like here's our terminal H top and here we are we're using not that much RAM and it's pretty darn cool to have this Windows 95 theme it really gives you that retro feel on your desktop and since we are based off Raspberry Pi OS we have all the same application support you can get Pi apps, Box 86, Wine you can have everything you can have on Raspberry Pi OS so it's a really great deal with using this operating system Ooh, Cupertino. So Cupertino is a macOS Big Sur theme. And as you know, I really love the macOS theme. I really love how clean it looks. So he's actually done a pretty good job with this. There are a few things he could change to make it look a little bit more realistic. But over overall, it looks really nice. So we have our finder right here. And one thing I would recommend is changing the light pad icon to the macOS Big Sur application finder because that is how it is on macOS Big Sur. But overall, it still looks pretty darn cool. I mean, here we have our Apple logo and it's basically just applications. So it's pretty cool. We do have this global menu on the top, which macOS does have, which is also really cool. We have Thunar File Manager, which is supposed to be Finder. And our close icons on the top right here do look pretty legit, just like macOS. I mean, this is Mac OS Big Sur theme on Phoenix OS. So it, it's pretty cool that it works this well and it's just super snappy. It's amazing. So let's go to the next theme. Let's go log out. And next in line, I think we have the after Cupertino. It says Phoenix, which we already looked at, but let's go ahead and look at unity so unity is basically what ubuntu started with ubuntu before using gnome used it used the unity desktop environment and if you used ubuntu unity before you know that this actually has a pretty cool desktop look and i actually really enjoyed it so he's actually implemented this into raspberry pi os running xfce so it works pretty well and looks pretty darn cool so we have that same cursor that we do in phoenix linux we click right here and give it a second and it's the whisker menu and we have all our applications right here you can scroll through all of them or you could search it like let's say we want etcher search Bellana etcher and it's a really nice way to be able to find all your applications super easily without having to go scrolling through a lot of things so i actually really like this unity style menu it makes stuff super easy so there, there's etcher we also do include that global menu on the top and then we have our trash right here so we can just empty trash and yeah empty trash and all our applications are right here like they are in ubuntu no so there's not else much to say about this but it's a really cool desktop environment and it just looks really clean so i actually really do enjoy using the unity desktop environment 
So next we are going to have Windows XP theme. So I actually do really like the Windows XP look. It looks pretty cool and it is like the first operating system I ever used. So it's pretty cool. So we scroll down right here and we have Windows XP theme. Let's type in our password, Phoenix. And let's get started into the Windows XP type of look. Here we are, we are in the Windows XP type of look, and man does it look cool. It looks pretty darn cool, just like Windows XP. I mean, we got our file manager right here, we have that nice logo. That's not a file manager, I guess. Let's click home. Give it a second. And I mean, this looks just like Windows XP, if I'm not gonna lie, because it is pretty darn close to the real legit Windows XP and our closing buttons right here do look just like Windows XP they have those boxy type of thing type of fields and our wallpaper here looks just like the Windows XP wallpaper so it's really cool and it looks really legit so this is the Windows XP theme we have all our icons on the bottom right here and our start menu does look pretty legit so let's go back to the Phoenix Linux theme before I close out this video and another thing that I do like about this operating system, with Twister OS, you have to reboot every single time that you want to change the theme. But this, you don't have to reboot, actually, you just log out of your desktop. So that is basically rebooting because you have to close all your sessions, but it is still, the re still really useful and it takes less time than rebooting your system. So here we are in the Phoenix OS Linux theme, and I just really enjoy this operating system. It's packed with lots of awesome features, and it really took my breath that it does not use that much resources. I thought with the Conky theme, Compass theme, that it would be using like 2 gigs of RAM on idle, but man, this uses not that much RAM whatsoever. So it is super cool. It's it's not as heavy and this operating system is super snappy to in spite of being in beta so i've had an awesome experience using this operating system i'd recommend you guys to check it out too because it's super cool so let me know down below what you think about this operating system do you like it or when you try it out what do you think about it let me know down below in the comments and thanks for watching